Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to another video. So, my thoughts on iOS 12. So, I have to say, I did think it was a very good software, and I want to do a quick recap of the things that actually came out of iOS 12. But the thing is that I found is it's very much like iOS 11. There's hardly any changes apart from group FaceTime. So much looking forward to that. As soon as they came out with iOS 12 and they were talking about the features, I actually said to myself, I hope they have group FaceTime. And me and my friend were texting each other backwards and forwards because we were watching it about loads and loads of details of what we're excited for as well. But I feel like iOS 12 this year is very much for the latest devices. So with AR Kit, you have to have the AR compatible devices, which to be fair, is that if you don't have those devices, that's pretty much pointless to you. The grouped notifications, that's going to be amazing. So this video, I wanted to do a quick recap because I wanted to just go over the things that I found. And if you guys haven't watched it, and I'm sure you probably watch millions of other YouTube videos out there talking about it. But this here is my view and my opinion on iOS 12 and WWDC of 2018. So let's head into the good old Google WWDC 2018. So, first thing, right, iOS 12. So as I said, they did release a new AR kit, including games compatible with AR, which I have to say look absolutely incredible. That sling ball game that they did, I think would be absolutely amazing. But as I said, you do need to have the compatible devices for AR, which, you know, if you don't have those devices and it's pretty much pointless to you, you're not going to be able to use it a lot. So that I was very excited for, but I was also kind of annoyed. However, iOS 12 is going to be compatible on all of the iOS 11 devices, which I have to say is a massive step for Apple. Usually they say the old devices doesn't support it. I have the iPhone 6 and I was actually really, really shocked that they said it would still be compatible. But iOS 10, I think, was the biggest upgrade that they've ever done because iOS 9, or it might as well iOS 9, but the old software was very much like basic. And then when they upgraded to iOS 9 or 10, I think it was 10, it was, you know, amazing. It was this whole new platform and that's kind of what I was hoping for with iOS 12, but it didn't happen. It's just the same as 11. Oh yeah, Adobe. So they're coming onto the AR with Apple as well, which was kind of surprising. I didn't really think that Adobe liked Apple that much, but obviously I was wrong. The Lego thing. So I'm not really a big fan of Lego, but when I saw that they had the Lego integration with AR, I thought it was really amazing. But the trouble is, I think it's going to get very boring very quickly unless they integrate loads and loads of stuff. Um, I know that people who like Lego are probably super, super excited about it. But yeah, I didn't really think that much of it because first of all, I was like, okay, this is really cool. And then about five minutes after them talking about it, I was like, okay, this is slightly getting boring now. Series shortcuts. I have to say that is going to be really, really handy. And everything looks so good on the iPhone 10. Oh... See, this is the thing, is that it, it almost brainwashes you because you want to go and get the new iPhone because you want it to look just as amazing as they showed it. But Siri Shortcuts is going to be amazing, so if you do have smart home compatible devices, you could just say, hey Siri, home. And then it, once you're on your way home, it will then set the thermostat, turn on your lights, do this, do that. Absolutely amazing. Oh god, yeah, this is the thing that I'm most scared about, is the limit to screen time. So if you're parents and you have your children have Apple devices and you don't really want them spending too much time on them, you can now limit that through the app. But also the fact that you can see how long you've been spending on each app, which and how long you've been spending it on your phone in total. Yeah, I think that's gonna be kind of scary. Oh yeah, so you could Siri can now remind you to call your grandma on her birthday. Which I have to say I'm not too sure if I like that. Although it is very good to get a reminder, but surely you should know but yeah, that's good that it's going to remind you. Um, do not disturb at the cinema. That's going to be really good. So that when you reach the cinema, it automatically turns on do not disturb. Yeah, so the do not disturb at, while sleeping or at night time, something like that. I have to say, I do turn on do not disturb when I go to bed. To not be able to see all the lock screen notifications. Because if I wake up in the night, the first thing I actually do is look on my phone and see what the time is. And then I see what I have loads of notifications and I start reading through them. Not being able to see those notifications until the morning is going to be super, super helpful. And group FaceTime. Hallelujah, the prayers have been answered. So you can now have 32 people in one FaceTime call. So they're basically going from one extreme to the other. Because who the hell has 32 people to ring in a FaceTime call? And if everyone's talking at the same time, it's going to get very confusing and very annoying. So I don't think 
people will be FaceTime with 32. But especially for like a group chat, if you only have three or four people, that's going to be really nice to have one FaceTime call that you could use without without using any third party apps. On to the next step, Mac OS Mojave. It did get a few big changes, obviously, but with a new name, Mojave. And the main thing and the thing that Apple really showed off the most was new dark mode, which did look very, very nice, which just had the shades black and grey, hence it's called dark mode. It's suitable for dark environments or for people who just want to colour, want their colours to pop a little more. The actual design of dark mode within a Mac is, I have to say, did look very, very nice, but I don't think I'm going to be using it that much. Desktop stacks. That is going to be one thing I'm going to be using the heck out of. On my desktop, I usually have like three columns of files and then by then it gets too much. So I can create a new folder called desktop. I put all of them into that desktop folder. And then once that fills up, I then put it into a new folder. So having desktop stacks where you can stack them by type or date, by sort or open or simply easable access folders built right into the desktop. So that is going to be really, really cool. And Apple were really promoting security this year. So Apple introduced a stronger and bolder default security settings for all the apps that covers the camera and microphone, tighter restrictions on tracking cookies online, and more limited sharing of your details of your Mac configuration online to restrict fingerprinting and tracking of your behavior. So that's one thing I didn't actually know is that by doing things saying, you know, do you allow this people, do you allow this website to access this, access that, they can actually find your data. So what Apple are now doing is making every single Mac's data very, very similar. So it's much harder for them to track all of your information, which is going to be, well, you know, it's safe. So that's one good thing. The Mac App Store also had a total redesign. So they did really, I have to say, the Mac App Store does look kind of boring right now. So it basically just looks very plain, simple, basic. But now it's going to have a new total design with Mac OS Mojave but however I have to say I'm really annoyed that it's coming out in September I mean it's three months away but to tell us now and then tell us we have to wait for three months also while we're on the topic of WWDC and September where the heck is air power they promoted this last year and it's almost going to be in time for the new iPhone by the time that comes out so why promote it and then not be ready for it? And they didn't even mention it in WWDC. Oh yeah, another thing, Watch OS 5. So I don't really update my watch that much. I think I have Watch OS 2 at the moment. Um, walkie talkie. It's kind of a stupid thing because if you're gonna walkie talkie to someone, you might as well just ring them. I didn't I didn't really understand the purpose of walkie talkie really. However, text messages and phone calls, yeah, you might as well just ring them. Why bother? However, they now accept new workouts such as yoga and hike it. Hiking, yeah, that is right. Then I'll accept new workouts such as yoga and hiking, automatic workout detection, series shortcuts, and improvements to the podcast app. Now, I want to know, do you actually use podcasts? Because I've never used the app, and I don't think a lot of people do. I might be wrong, but if you do, then let me know down in the comments. But I don't think I've ever actually listened to a podcast. TVOS, I haven't really updated my TV, um, Apple TV that much, but obviously the Apple TV 4K. Introduction to Adobe Atmos, I have to say, Adobe Atmos, that's actually incredible. The sound quality is amazing. So, a Mac Pro update. Apple's already said that it won't be ready to launch till 2019. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Oh, there was also the expectation that Apple would unveil a new iPad Pro with Face ID and a bigger screen this June. Well, obviously, they didn't, so... Oh, here, AirPower. It almost seemed likely that we would finally see the AirPower wireless charging pad. However, Apple announced this product in September 2018, so it's beginning to look somewhat delayed. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you go down there and give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will have a video coming out either later this week or beginning of next week, so make sure you keep an eye out for that, and you'll see me in my next video. See you later. Goodbye.